Shout out to Carter. He writes, what are some places to get affordable business and business casual clothing to dress for success? I'm a college student studying finance. I want to dress more professionally. You know what? If I'm being honest with you, um, I think Marshalls is a Marshalls and Ross are good uh, places to get low cost uh, dress clothes. But remember this, it's not about the brand of the clothes. It's about the fit of the clothes. You're going to look most professional. You're going to look best when the clothes fit well. So I'd really focus on that aspect of making sure that the clothes fit. Shout out to Cameron. He writes, Peace of Saints. I have a girl that wanted to take a break. Up, oh, major red flag. I politely accepted because I'm focused on grad school. Advice on her spinning the block via a long text after six months. All I replied was salam. Yeah, I mean, if you want to smash, go ahead and smash. But any chick that asks for a break, something ain't right, my boy. And that'll be the same chick that you end up in a long-term relationship with or a marriage with. And <clears throat> she's going to want to uh, you know, separate and do all this weird stuff. She's going to divorce you. That's that girl. A woman who's about you is not ever going to even consider taking a break. That's not a concept. She might get mad at you and maybe like go stay in a hotel for a night. She might get mad at you, might not want you to stay in the house for a night, but a, a break is not a concept for a dedicated woman. May I acknowledge via Venmo, shout to Hills in supporting the work. Appreciate you. Also shout to Badak. He writes a uh, message at the email address. Yes, indeed. And I see it here. He writes, glad you're doing well as always. Currently, I'm an analyst slash technician in my IT team with an ministry in my province. That's always good. I'm working on big ticket projects and networking with peers and management. Very good. In your recommendation, what other strategies should I employ to land my next role as an intermediate analyst within pay, with a pay increase? The average for an intermediate analyst is this amount. May you prosper and continue building Peace of the Saints. The first thing I would do is figure out who is the gatekeeper, so who's the hiring manager for that role. So once I identify who the hiring manager is, I'd be very transparent. Hey, uh, I would like the job title of intermediate analyst. What's the quickest I can get that job and what needs to be done or displayed? Now, the challenge with government work is that often you're on a time schedule and things, you know, you can only come up for review on a, you know, quarterly or on a certain, you know, predetermined uh, schedule. So in as much as that's the case, um, you have to suffer. But I would ask them, what's the next job? Or I want this job title. You're the hiring manager. What's the quickest I can do it? Are there any other ways? Are there any other loopholes? And also, what do I need to display to get this job? And I would write down those things and I would establish a check-in with them. I would voluntarily say, hey, do you mind if we check back, you know, maybe you know, every three weeks, just so we can see how I'm adding up on these things. And so when it comes time to get promoted, you know, it's just him like stamping it and everything is already good to go. And it sounds like you're doing great and congratulations. And I think government work is great. In America, we've seen how a lot of folks like, um, I forget who the Republican woman is, the brunette, her name's escaping me. Uh, I think it's Nikki Haley. You know, folks who go into government, you know, they you they can leverage government to make become millionaires, hundred millionaires. And so I think that you're in a good position. I highly recommend you continue growing. And also, um, when you have products and services on the side, you get to leverage government to advance your products and services. Obviously, please do it as legally as possible, but it's a good position. Shout out to Nathan, who just became a member at patreon.com slash the saint and the center. May I also acknowledge Hector. He writes, tuition. Ben and Candace live was fire. I appreciate that. Shout out to Jonathan. He writes, oh, appreciate that. What's that? Okay, for sure. I didn't even realize that that was the case. That was unfortunate. Thank you. That's a, that's a good eye. That's love right there. Cam writes, when is the next call-in show searching for solutions? I was talking about this, this kind of a business show I trust, right? Understood. I need to ponder on that. I think it'd probably be nice to run these on Sunday, but I'm not sure that I want to put two uh, shows on one day just for my own personal time. But let's say we should do this at least once a week. So you'll see me back on this topic at least once a week. Fantastic.
Number five, key to success, financial success, especially in business, is persistence, particularly pushing the product or service. And we usually like to talk about product-based business, pushing it to success or to failure. It doesn't really even matter which side it falls on, because if it falls on the side of success, then we're going to start optimizing to figure out how we can make more money out of it. If it falls on the side of failure, then we're just going to go through the process again with a different product. And that's okay doesn't really matter. But the key is pushing it all the way to the end. Most often what happens is that people, they have a product and they think that it's failing when really it's not failing. You've just not figured out the appropriate uh, strategy for it. For example, for those of you who are taking the course called uh, how to create and monetize your own app, there's a number of things we figured out throughout the course of putting this product in the marketplace. So for example, we put a product in the marketplace that allows vendors to sign up on our website and get paid. A part of the signup process for a vendor is that they have to put their information to get paid. Initially, the way we did it the first time is they have to actually put in banking information, uh, significant amounts of information, their name, their address, their routing number, their account number, and so on. And we found that that was uh, cumbersome and it was causing people to not complete the process. Whereas we changed it and we had we put it so that they just have to put in their cash app or their PayPal. That's it. So we reduce it from like a whole form to just one entry. And that is radically going to change our ability to onboard vendors. So those are the kind of tweaks that you make to increase the, uh, or rather reduce the friction that your users experience on your technology. I say that to point out to you, we didn't say, oh, this is a fail. Vendors aren't signing up or vendors aren't completing the signup process. We said, our signup process is too cumbersome. The product's not a fail. This process is a fail. We optimized that technical process, and now we're going to put the product back into the market to see how people like it. And you have to push the thing all the way to failure or success. But on the process of pushing a product to failure or success, you have to tweak it so that you're giving the market your best op- offering. And I'm not saying your best offering in terms of the beauty of the product. But the core functionality of the product, what's called the unique value add, most people give up too early or they start on the wrong thing. They give up too early or they start on the wrong thing, which is why when people ask me, hey, Marquette, should I do a food truck? No, you shouldn't. Marquette, should I do a clothing company? Absolutely not. They start on the wrong thing. What were you saying? <laughs> yeah, and if people want to call in, you can send in your super chat and you can call in if you had a, a particular uh, business product that you need a, a quick uh, review on or a quick question. What's that? 20. Yeah. Yeah, send in your 20 bucks and you can come on, ask your quick question or show your product. And there have been a number of times we've re- reviewed folks who have you know websites or a particular business model that they needed to work out. And the, the revenue model, how do you make money, is really the only question of any product. You're, I mean, if you can't get that question answered correctly for yourself, you're not going to have a good business. And remember, business is about making money. It's all great when people are like, oh, you know, this business is about, it's my life work. That's great, but it needs to make money, okay? All this hokey stuff you hear online when people say things like, ah, you need to do what your passion is. Nah, screw that. Most young men uh, nowadays, their passion is playing video games and beating your meat. And I assure you, no one's going to pay you to do that. Now, for some reason, you're an extraordinary nerd and you can get paid uh, for playing video games. By all means, do it. But that's a minuscule percentage of you. Everyone else, you need to find ways to offer value to the marketplace. Now, I want you to do this. Focus on the money, not the product. I was talking to a saint uh, in a consultation recently. He's very product focused, which is fine, but I'm very money focused because it's business. So I don't care about the product for the most part, especially the earlier, the broke. If I'm broke and I'm young, I care even less about the product. I care more about the money. If I'm established, then I care more about the product. I have the luxury of doing that. I have a friend, Mark Pfeiffer, whom I I reference every now and then. We went to university together. We're good friends. He joined the fraternity that I founded. We have a long history. He's a good businessman. 
very solid in real estate and e-commerce. And Mark cares nothing about product. Now, I'll give you an example of how you know Mark cares nothing about the product and wholly about the money. Mark has a number of products that are just very strange. For example, uh, one of his products is a uh, potter. Is that what that's called? A potter? Potter? Yeah, I don't even know what it's called. But it's basically, it's it's a clay pot that looks like a face. So it's a clay pot that looks like a face that you hang on the wall that you put a plant in. So it's basically a plant holder that looks like a face that you hang on the wall. That's one of his products. Like Mark, what, like, or Mark, well, why, why do you have this product? Like, do you, do you grow plants or something? No. Okay. He has another product. It was called a, what was that green rubber one? Yeah, it's like a, an Instapot. It was like something used for like boiling food or something like that or like straining food, uh, straining water out of like spaghetti or something. Coriander? Okay, well, whatever. He had some some cooking tool, right? It's like a rubber cooking tool. I was like, Mark, what, what, do you, you use this tool when you cook? He's like, no, I don't, I don't cook at all. Why, why do you sell this? Because it makes money. It makes money. I'm selling 800 of these per month. It makes a lot of money. And I like that about Mark. Mark doesn't care what the product is. He has the most peculiar products. And I think it's conference two footage. He talks about how to select a product. And he uses uh, he uses search engine. Uh, he uses techniques to identify which searches are being searched at a high volume. So when users go on to Amazon and they're looking for something, and there's a high volume of search queries, but there's a low um, population of results. There's a insignificant. There's not enough um, products being offered in that category. So if he sees like a lot of people are searching for this product, but there's not enough of these products, I'm going to create one and sell it. And he doesn't care what the product is. So he's very money focused, and and that's a beautiful thing. I love to see. And and as a result, he's been very successful. And he uses the data to guide his product development and his profitability. You should all be money focused. You are not going to win at the highest level unless you're ruthlessly money focused. And I want you all to increase your money consciousness. Don't allow money to be your God. As you probably all know, I'm a very spiritual man and money is definitely not everything to me. Hell, I like making money more than I like having or spending money. I enjoy the actual process of making money. That I enjoy. I like that game. It's a fun hobby to me. So be very money conscious. It's not about the product. It's not about the business. It's about the money. That's what it needs to be in your head. Uh, biography writes, okay. Are there any saints or anyone that you know that has a legitimate cybersecurity training program that I may partake in after completing the training? I'll help any way I can cybersecurity related. I appreciate that. That was very uh, kind of you. We do have Joshua, actually, the guy who's always sending baller alerts. He's not specifically um, on the cybersecurity uh, side as, as far as I know, but I know he's legit in as much as A, uh, he's a legitimate military man who learned these skills within the military and ascended very high in the military. He's also been training and teaching this for some time. And more importantly, he's actually trained a number of saints who have gotten their certs and gotten jobs. And I personally know them there in Saint City. So that's a we can sign off on that. You dig? Um, so if you uh, would send me an email to the email address below, I can uh, connect you with uh, Joshua. I'd be happy to make that uh, introduction. And mind you, saints, for me, it's an honor to make good uh, introductions, especially because I, I'm putting my name on the line anytime I make an introduction. So I never make introductions or recommend things that are not vetted, tried and true, you know? Shout out to Wayne. He writes, can I get the link? Okay. Sure. Uh, sure. I'd be happy to take a look at your uh, LinkedIn profile. Did he share the, the link? What'd you say? 
Right. That's crazy. Is that his uh, government name? Is that his government name? Okay. So we dropped the link for Wayne or Creon. Thank you. We'll give you guys about 30 seconds, get you tuned up real nice. May I also acknowledge Justice, uh, who is a member at assassin.com. We appreciate you. Wayne, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Fine. How are you? I'm well. Peace to the saints. Uh, this is my phone company. My phone company, but a uh, reselling company. I'm going to put it in the chat. It's a website? No, no. Page. Instagram page. Okay. Yeah. I can't copy and paste, so why don't you tell me the handle and I'll, um, I'll go Silent. ahead. S-I-L-U-M. One moment. All right. Okay, so give me a second. I'm going to screen share as I type it in just so that you can see. Like me, when I have products or websites, I always want to know um, how they're ranking. So uh, go ahead and spell it for me. S I L U M. S I L U M. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the third one. This one here. Yeah. Okay. So number three. That's that's good. Yeah. 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 All right. There we go. That's uh, okay. So let's see. So presumably this is your logo. Uh, generally, what I like to do with logos is I either like to have the image, like the app icon, or the words, like one or the other, usually not both. But especially in this case, you've got some, uh, the, the text yeah. is a bit small. Has a store and repairs, just think slum. Or is Silent. it asylum? Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it's obviously too small, but yeah, that's fine. Anyway, so 30 posts, three, uh, nearly 4,000 followers, three following, that's neat. Uh, product, we will always find a way. So you have your tagline there. We will also do phone repair. Okay, so I probably would remove the first tagline in as much as it doesn't mean anything. Uh, we will. We also do phone repair. I probably put precisely what you do. So you do phone repair and what else? Selling, phone selling. Okay, so I would, like what kind of phones do you sell? Mainly iPhones. Mainly iPhones. Okay, so that would be something I'd want to know in the description, right? Oh. So, so off rip, one thing you want listed uh, is we sell and repair iPhones. Uh -huh, yeah. Boom. We sell and re repair iPhones. Why do you have more than one contact number? Uh, it's three of us. Cool. Okay. That's fine. And yeah. all three of you are, you know, comparably competent. It doesn't matter who they talk to. It's all good. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're competent. Okay. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're in Guyana. Yeah. Very good. Shout out. Um, Oh, that was you asking me about the uh, potential conflict with Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's tomorrow, you know. It's tomorrow is the referendum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on you. I got to slide over to Georgetown sometime soon. Okay, so you got 30 posts. I'm going to go down to the bottom because that's just kind of character I am. Uh -huh. so go down to the bottom. So That was the first post. Okay, so fully unlocked or use. Okay, so this is a phone for sale. Yeah. Great. And when these are phones for sale? Yeah, yeah. Each, uh, if you go to the second slide on each uh, post, you're going to see me displaying the the phones. Second slide. Uh, I don't see the slide. Oh, oh, shucks. I'll go Press to maybe the one. New, I'll go to a new yeah, one. Yeah, the new ones. Yeah. <laughs> the new ones. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. So I think the black glove is a nice touch, you know, show that you have like respect for the product and like yeah. keep the product pristine. So I think that's very smart, good looking stuff. So just full display in the product. I think that's good. Um, one thing I would also consider um, doing is because these are all currently available, right? Yeah. Okay. 
So one thing that you also might consider is when it's sold, because I used to shop a lot for rare cars. And when you're shopping for rare cars, what they'll have on the catalogs that you look at is they'll have all of their current inventory, but they'll also have like this dope car that you really want. And then it, on, across it, it'll say sold and have like red and it'll say sold, which lets you know that A, they're actually selling the cars. People are paying the price that they're asking for, number one. And then number two, that you have to hurry up their scarcity because someone might buy it before you buy it. The, the problem with Instagram is that uh, when you boost it the time, afterwards, you can't edit the post. You can't. You just can't. Correct. I tried before. Yeah, so it will be yeah. a new post. Yeah. So you're, you're, actually, bo oh, you're actually putting paid, uh, you're sponsoring these ones? Yeah, the old the older ones yes, fans, but now it's uh, natural growth, organic. Well, yeah, yeah. No, I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with. And the good thing too is that when you add that additional post, you're getting an additional touch point with the consumer. So you're putting out more. You're reminding the consumer that you exist. So even okay. if it doesn't get as many eyeballs, and it's saying sold, so it's not an opportunity for them to buy anything anyway. So I definitely wouldn't run an ad unit on it. But you're getting another another touch point with the consumer, and that's the goal is to make the consumer constantly aware of you. This is why sometimes you ever like sign up on a website or buy something, and then all of a sudden you're getting a bunch of advertisements like that are talking about um, like oh like hey by the way like we're having this sale or by the way fill in the blank. Alibaba does that a lot. <laughs> Alibaba exactly. does that. Yeah. yeah. So they're basically just giving a touch point to remind you that they exist, not because you might buy another cell phone, but maybe your brother was just looking for a cell phone or maybe it's Christmas and you're not going to get one for yourself, but you're going to get one from, for someone else. And so increasing those touch points is always favorable to a business. Uh -huh. right. Well, cool. Yeah. I think all in all, I think uh, things look pretty good I you for what you're doing. I think this is really neat. Obviously, there's less focus. It looks like on the actual repair business. Yeah, yeah, um, mainly, there's yeah. more. Yeah, it's, it's mainly on the uh, sales business, which is fine. And um, I'm assuming oh. that screen repair is probably your primary oh. business on the side of repairs. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. screen repairs is your most things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks like it's uh, pretty good. It's pretty good. Congratulations on on your success. Now, what would make you more successful? Ah, uh, well, for me, it, it has to be getting a location, which will solidify we and make people trust us more, which is the main problem at the moment. With us. You're saying a physical location? Yeah, a physical location. Uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to challenge you to, to think harder than that. Um, you can make people trust you more by utilizing oh. testimonials. Like, for example, if someone buys phones for from you you know whether you had that sold one and then they swipe and then it's like so and so like oh hey i got i got this phone from from wayne and his company i just want to say thanks or i got this phone it was listed it was retailing for a thousand wayne gave it to me for 800 just want to say thanks or you know those are the things that can drive trust but when you get a brick and mortar location you're investing more money in things that are not going to make more money you have to have, you know, I don't know if you're going to pay electricity. I don't know how things are in Guyana, but you have a storefront, you have physical space. You don't want to be brick and mortar. You want to be online. So there are better ways to drive profit margins. Wayne, thank you for coming on. It's a pleasure to meet you, Saint. And God willing, one day I touch down in Guyana. Is that uh, about you around Guyana, I trust? Or around uh, Georgetown? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah God willing. God yeah, willing. Yeah, I heard the beaches are not too beautiful there. Huh? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta go. You have to go in uh, the interior, not in Jarashong. Jarashong, the beach is brown and full of garbage. When you go in the interior, though, the interior is like uh, is like by the Amazon rainforest. When you go there, it's beautiful. Jarashong is nasty. Though. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you straight up, it's that nasty, hurts but heart. it's it's getting beautiful. It's getting better by the day. And you better. guys have one of my favorite scholars, uh, Dr. Ivan von Sertema. Never heard of him. You never heard? Oh, oh bro, bro, look, look, <laughs> bro. Listen, man. If when you finish this live set, <laughs> you look up Dr. Ivan von Sertema. He's now deceased, but he's probably one of the most famous <laughs> Guyanese uh, in terms of academia. But until next time, it was a pleasure to meet you, Wayne. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Okay, who wanted me to look at their LinkedIn?
Okay. Oh, wow. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Peace of the Saints. Uh, you had wanted us to look at your LinkedIn? I, I did. And uh, okay. there's a few things that, uh, a few questions that I have. The first thing is that I majored in accounting. And that's a little bit of a regret of mine because not because I don't think accounting is a great major, but in the future, I don't think it's going to hold up. I think it's we, a lot of us are going to be replaced. So I wish I majored in comp sci or something like that, but I didn't. And I'm not going to go back to college. Right. <laughs> more money. So uh, that's one thing. The second thing is I do have experience. Um, I am currently a banker at Capital One. Okay. But I kind of, I'm a little bit on the edge about what I should do next. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So number one, when you're within a large corporation, and I know this to be a fact because I used to give lectures and do training for such corporations. So for example, with uh, Procter & Gamble, right? Very big corporation for people like, what's Procter & Gamble? They produce your soap, your Kleenex, your toiletries, your cleaning products. Is that about right? Hand sanitizer, pretty much everything that you would use in a kitchen is made by Procter & Gamble. Very large, wealthy corporation. And so what they'll often do is they'll allow for intrapreneurship, which is to say current employees within this large corporation to learn how to innovate within the corporation. And so there's usually innovation labs within any major corporation. And so you have an accounting background, you're within Capital One, big bank credit in, uh, institution. And so if I were you, I'd be trying to figure out how can I wiggle my way into that fintech side of things where they have the bleeding edge opportunities. So what you want to do is leverage your accounting skills or background to either do it as an entrepreneur within Capital One or figure out where the, what their uh, innovation lab opportunity is. And they got to have one, especially for young folks, especially someone of color, as they might call it, they got to have something. Or I would look at going into a startup that's going to need someone on the accounting side, but really probably can't properly afford it. You might go in as their CFO, a chief financial officer, and work for a finance-focused tech startup and then figure out how you can you know, parlay your opportunity from there. But you're right. You're very wise to know that the accounting profession is going to experience some contraction and more importantly... Um, American firms are using accountants in India. I know this because when I was running a tech company in the education industry, we were working with the chartered accountants of India, which is an enormous institution and they do a lot of remote work. And so in as much as that's the case, you're always going to be in a competitive state where they're going to lower your wages. So, uh, you're wise, but accounting is a good degree. It makes sure that you're, uh, a person who has, as they say, your numbers together and you're diligent. And so I, I think that's a good foundational degree. And honestly, a bachelor's doesn't make you a specialist anyway. So I don't think it matters too much. True, true. And I just have one more question. Once you review or after you review my LinkedIn or before, should I ask it now or? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so when I, when I was 18, I was doing a lot of stupid things, a lot of foolish things. And, uh, you know, like going out way too involved with females in general and doing a lot of stupid things. And, uh, I kind of ruined my credit. So how would you, how would I go about building things quickly because right now I have probably like $30,000 saved up, but because my credit isn't so good, there's not much I could do with it besides invest. I was doing things like renting Airbnbs with my brother, mm -hmm. renting like hotels because I was living with my mom and that's how I was getting around. And, you know, I, I regret it, but it's my reality yeah. now. So yeah, no, there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, for the most part, credit credit can be useful. Most of the things that you're absolutely going to need credit for, you'll still have access to even with a, a terrible credit score. So for example, if you wanted to purchase a home, you're, you're a young man. If you were to purchase a home, it'd probably be somewhere within uh, you know no more than a quarter of a million dollars, $250,000, which uh, f as far as home prices go is very low. And that being the case, there's an underlying asset. So the bank is willing to take a greater risk on you because there's an asset that they can seize if you screw up. 
One thing you won't be able to get are personal loans, right? Like if you're like, hey, I need 10,000 in cash or I need 100,000 in cash to do fill in the blank with, then no, you're not going to be granted that. You'd be granted a mortgage, less than favorable um, interest rate, which is fine because uh, buying a house is generally a good thing. So there's nothing to worry about there. If you wanted to get an auto loan for a car, you can still get an auto loan because there's an underlying, I, I don't like using the word asset, but there's something for the uh, loan maker to repossess. So you'll still be able to get a loan for a car. You'll just have uh, higher monthly payments than you would have otherwise. And truth be told, at your age, there's really no need to get a car uh, with payments. You buy a piece of crap for 4000 that runs reasonably well and carry on from there if you're in a city that you need a car like Los Angeles or, or a city in Texas. Um, otherwise, well, what would you need credit for? And these are the important questions we have to ask ourselves because sometimes like we allow the quote unquote matrix or the establishment to make us think things are important that are not important. Credit is useful, but I'd always rather have money than credit. So would I rather have a 800 credit score? Would I rather have $30,000 in cash? Me, I'd rather have $30,000 in cash for sure. An 800, an 800 credit score, you can certainly like get a Rolls Royce on credit for sure, but it's still credit. Um, and credit's not money. So what do you feel like you need your, your, you should get good credit and I'll tell you, give you some tips on that, but what do you feel like you need credit for? Uh, I don't want to buy a car because I live in New York city. And so there's no reason right. for me to really ever have a car <laughs> to be honest, but, right. uh, eventually I do want one, but it's not a car that I want. I would like to invest in property. Right. So there's two things. So if you're going to get a property, and usually what happens with a lot of folks who start on the real estate side is that they're getting a single family detached or since you're on the East Coast, you might get a row home. Um, and it, usually you're getting it at, with a loan under your name. You're not getting it as an investment property. And the major difference is that you know, you might be able to put down between 0% and 5% on a house that you get under your own name that you're going to occupy theoretically. If it's an investment property, now you all, all of a sudden have to put up 30% which is a lot more and you might need business credit and you would instead get that house through an LLC rather than your own personal name. And so being that you're a young man, you want to get into the real estate game, you'd probably start with your own, uh, getting a house under your own name, which you can still do with you know less than ideal credit. Also, you can have a co-signer. I don't know how much your parents really, <clears throat> really support, but you seem like a clean cut young man. You said you live with your, your parents still. So I, I'm, guessing they trust you at some level. You've created a uh, completed degree in accounting. So that's good. So you can probably get them as a, a co-signer if need be. And real estate's a good game. And New York is a great place to play that game. So I think that you're still good to go. So don't imagine more obstacles than are actually there. That's number one. And here's another crazy piece is that, and you're, you know, you're from the home of Donald Trump. And one thing that Donald is good at is making deals. And what you find out in business is that a lot of it is making deals, whether you call that finessing or finding the back door or doing things in an alternative method. There's so many ways to get things done in business. If you're a real hustler, if you're ambitious, and especially if you got a little bit of change to play with, like you'd be astounded at how much the banks are wanting to give you a loan as much as you want to get a loan. And they'll, they'll pull strings for you. This is what I mean. The whole subprime mortgage crisis was the banks trying to give out as many loans as possible because that's how banks make money. Right? So you need to find a way to get the bank to give you a loan. I'll give you one example. Um, pro tip, you know, people tend to think that if you're going to get a loan, you need to give your uh, tax records to a bank, which is standard. But there are also banks that will use your, uh, your bank statements. So they don't need your tax records at all. They'll just look at how much money you've had in your bank for the last six months. Most people don't know that. So I say that to say that there's always a way to get something done. If you're willing to do a little bit of research and be crafty, you can make things happen. And if you keep that mindset, you're going to be wildly successful trying to do things in the traditional way or the way everyone else does it or the way that's popular. That's usually the loser way. Because remember, most people are losers. So whatever is popular or common is usually the, the worst way to do it. You want to do it the way that people don't even know about, right? That's the way you want to get things done. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that advice. You're truly knowledgeable. <laughs> I appreciate that. So we got this uh, profile. So number one, you got the banner capital one. That's pretty cool. You have a reasonably, um, you have a good looking profile photo, nice clean shirt, random background, less than ideal. The photo's a bit uh, pixelated, but honestly, that doesn't matter very much. 
Uh, so I think that one's good enough. You have 43 connections. I would certainly try to increase that. You're in New York, the Big Apple. Everyone on the planet Earth respects that. Um, let's see. No one really cares about this. More so people who are really looking to hire you for a high-level position are mostly concerned with your mutual connections. So that's number one, first and foremost. Then they're going to look at your experience. You're a young man, so that's going to be limited. Um, but this is all respectable stuff. And, you know, this kind of thing matters to people who have money. So this is of interest to people. So I think that's a good thing. Shout out to you. Then they look at the education. You took a degree in something legitimate. Uh, so that's good. So I, I think your LinkedIn profile is pretty clean. All I would do is uh, bump it up in two areas in particular in the skills area. So, you know, you generally want to see some uh, references. So, for example, I'll just pop up mine real quick to show you what it should look like. So the skills, you want to bump that up. And then on the connections, you want to bump that one up significantly. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. And one second, what'd you say? Oh, oh yeah. And, and you can have an entire resume on your LinkedIn, bullet point out the notes from each of your, your jobs would be more helpful. And I'll just show you, um, let me see if you profile. Now, me, I'm never trying to get a job, so I don't really use LinkedIn in a legitimate way. So my profile has had nearly no work into it. If I was searching for a job, I'd probably make some effort on it. But anyways, um, so a professional photo, which is what you have. By the way, wear a coat. And when you just wear a dress shirt, you, you tend to not look like the boss. So you want to for sure wear a coat as much as possible. I hate taking my coat off. So you see coat, higher quality photo. Now, obviously, in my case, I'm older than you. I've had more time to do stuff like this. Uh, follower count is significant. Again, I've just had a lot more time than you. And um, I don't even know what this random stuff is. Probably crazy stuff I'm saying on LinkedIn. Uh, this is inconsistent here in terms of how it's formatted. You should care enough to format yours. I don't care because I'm not looking to get employed. Uh, you. Oh, now here's the skills area. So this is important generally depending on what you're trying to do. So having people endorse you, and that's probably going to come more with you expanding your network on there. And also, I think if you endorse other people, they might endorse you back. I don't, I don't know because I don't endorse people, but um, it'll give people a sense of where your skills lie. Obviously, my top one, uh, public speaking and then entrepreneurship. So these are things that I actually do in real life and other people can attest to it. And you can see who's endorsed you, like if those people are actually legit. So those kind of things matter. So those are the two areas I'd look for. Increase your, your connections and then also increase uh, your endorsements and then you'll be off to the races. But right now, what I would search for if I were you, uh, you said Capital One. So I'll say uh, Capital One. I'm just going to type in Innovation Labs. Innovation. They might not even have one by this name, but I'm just curious. Inspires Innovation. Capital One Lab. Mission to reimagine banking and give us a, exactly. So let's see. So this is the kind of thing I would look into and figure out, well, how do I get plugged in with this? Like the, the new things that they're doing where I can um, you know, be a factor. We explore the intersection of emerging technology and finance, right? FinTech, FinTech. That's what I said. This is where you need to be looking. At the lab, our job is blah, 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 blah. So you should try to figure out how do you get involved with this Capital One lab. And you should have a shoe in as, an, as a guy who's 18 or 19, 20, 21, 22 of color and actually works for Capital One. Life at the, Yeah, so this is the kind of thing I would look into if I were you. Uh, I think that'll be very helpful to you. It's been a pleasure to make your acquaintance and I appreciate the support. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And honestly, your your courage and your ability to just be honest on the internet, I applaud it. Thank you. Thank so you. I appreciate that. You have a great day. You too. Jeremy writes, been currently doing uh, security, pushing my passion in barbering without going to school because I'm cutting hair at my house for free for now. Any advice for new barber plan on moving to NYC? You know, I know, I know we have to have a lot of barbers with an assassin, like professional barbers. Uh, we have to. We absolutely have to. So I'd love for you to be able to get connected with some of those guys. If you're in our Discord, uh, do make a post on that because they will give you the very best industry-specific advice on that. But number one, so there's some things that you should go to school for, and there are other things that ah, it's probably just not even necessary like that. Cutting hair. Frankly, 
black guy cutting black men's hair, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, I don't think you need to go to school for that. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, are there regulations in that industry? Maybe, but probably not. I don't think you need to go to school for that. So that's number one. So, uh, and congratulations on you following something that you're passionate about because it's something that you're passionate about that people are willing to pay for. Obviously not me, the ball head lover ain't about to pay you, but uh, many people will. So for example, when he writes, I'm cutting hair at my house for free for now. I hope you don't mean the people whose hair you're cutting are getting a free haircut. I hope you mean that you're, it's free because you're not paying rent uh, as a barber. But uh, if you are cutting people's hair and you're doing a good enough job that they want to come back to you rather than pay a professional, then yeah, you should charge something. Maybe not as much as someone with a proper barber shop, but you should start charging something to test your thesis that you can make money at this. So that's step one. What can I charge these folks? Maybe if a proper haircut within a barber shop is 30 bucks, maybe you charge them 20. Uh, but you should absolutely get started with that. And he says, my bigger plan is to move to New York City. New York City is very expensive. So you want to make sure that you have a little bit of savings and runway and uh, also figure out, well, do I have a client base where I currently am? So if you live in Flint, Michigan right now and you're, you currently got eight guys whose head you cut for free, then I'd start charging those eight guys. And if they're paying, then you're like, God, I got eight regular customers who come to me every two weeks. You might want to think twice before you up and leave. You know what I'm saying? So wishing you much success on that. Biography writes, I sent my emails to the supported email link. Would I be able to join the live and converse with the one and only? Yeah, for sure. Um, and no, it doesn't have to be about LinkedIn. We give everyone uh, about 30 seconds uh, to say what they need to say. Shout out to Darren. He writes a message sent to email. Oh, went to my spam. Okay. Good eye. That's a pity. If you were creating a niche product that doesn't exist, would you consider pairing that product with another product with the same niche as the one you created to drive more sales or sell it individually? Generally, I, if you're doing something that's worthwhile, you can sell it individually. So generally, if you're doing something that's worthwhile, you can sell it individually. He writes, example, if I created the first knife sharpener, should it be paired with a knife? <laughs> Fair enough. So if you created the world's first knife sharpener, you're obviously there's a need for knives to be sharpened. So you're presuming that the consumer already has a knife. So no, I would just sell the knife, knife sharpener. And I would keep things simple for you um, because you really want to figure out how do I master this one thing that I'm doing? And if, it, if, if that one thing that you're doing is offering enough value and it should be able to offer enough value as a standalone product, you, you don't need to pair it. And we always want to think very simply about value. You know, things that are really value to the consumer, the consumer is going to go get it. The iPhone, they're going to stand in line for it. When it comes out, the Jordans, people are going to stand in line for it. Uh, vagina, people are going to be driving on their way to work. Oh, you see a chick? That's walking that blade in a short skirt, they're going to pull over. Might even go to work 15 minutes late. Um, they're looking for it. So if there's a real need, people don't need it to be paired with something else to add value. It should have value all alone. It's funny you mentioned a knife sharpener. I recently threw away a, a steak knife because it was getting dull. Now, I've never sharpened a knife in life. Have you ever sharpened a knife? Never in life? Do you just throw away knives or just buy new ones? You just buy new ones. So that's something to think about. Um, so, And I don't know if your product is a knife sharpener, but the point is there's some product categories <clears throat> to where it, it's valuable, but is it valuable enough? Like for example, and, and it depends on who you ask, right? So if you were selling electric blankets, yes, it gets cold at night in Las Vegas, but it doesn't get electric blanket cold. But if you're in Moscow, Russia, maybe it does get electric blanket cold. People would buy it. So you have to think about the market that you're selling to and also is it valuable enough? For me, knife sharpeners are not valuable enough because I would just throw away the knives and buy a new set. Um, she would throw away the knives and buy a new set. Uh, maybe there are those who wouldn't and those who wouldn't throw away the knife and buy a new set, I'm assuming they have very expensive knives. That might be a small market. Um, so you want to think about these things. 
Do you want to appeal to a small market or a big market? And remember, when you're appealing to a small market, you can charge a premium price uh, generally because you're selling a luxury product, but it's harder to market because it's very few of these people. So it's harder to reach them and identify them, and it's more expensive often. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Um, you dropped the link for biography. Fantastic. St. Key running belt is now listed for you. Fantastic. Yes. While you're, Oh yeah, that is a good point. You can get your whole set uh, while you're checking out the uh, running belt with uh, by St. Key. You can also check out the mouth guard by major mind and soul. You can check out the hand wraps as well and, and get uh, everything you need for your athletics and your health. Giovanni comes in by Cash Up Rights, a little more tuition. Thank you for this live. Absolutely. Truly a pleasure. It's always nice to be able to interface with real hustlers. You dig? Who'd you drop that link for? Biography? Are you biography? Yes. It's Tawan Pratt. Dang, okay. I'm, really, I'm really on with the seat in the center, the one and only. You know, I, here. I want to tell you that you really my idol for real. Like, I be saying that all the time. They be like, I'm the one and only because I really am the one and only. There's only one of me and there's only one of you. Like, That's so, a true story. And damn, I just want to say it's an honor to be here right now. Like, I, I feel like I'm talking to you are a celebrity. I'm not going to lie. How you came from just the slums to where you are now, you, you definitely an idol on my eyes. But like, yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to you connecting me with Joshua. I'm, I'm really just trying. I didn't know none of that. I'm just really trying to learn cybersecurity, get the skills, get compensated for my competence, and just really yeah. out here and put the work in. Right now, I'm in work. I'm at work right now doing security. You know, got to get okay. that Mayan. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a new word yeah. for money out here. Mayan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Like, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you know what? You're going to like Joshua because, you know, he's he's straightforward. He's legit. So you're going to appreciate him. And also Nick went through his uh, program. So the captain out here in St. City. So he's a fee issue. So Nick went through his program, got a job. He's earning well, living well, talking about traveling. I like to hear that. So, yeah, absolutely. We'll we'll link you up. Do we have do we have his email address? What? So you have his information. OK. Cool. Okay, so she's forwarding your information to Joshua right now. So we're gonna have you tapped in ASAP. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? And you told. Me. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, please go ahead. Um, it's crazy you say he was in the military because I was the guy, if you recall, on the Fresh and Fit podcast. I was the guy that uh donated. That was talking about um the military. I got ADHD, and then you. You thought they was talking, they was going to explain it, but then you explained it, and then you answered my question for them. Yeah, that was me. And the crazy thing, I was going to join the military for cybersecurity. The thing is, because the school thing, I'm more of a hands-on person. I'm starting to realize that. And, like, the school thing is more, like, theoretical, like... Mm -hmm. I know that I have a hard time when it comes to theoretical things. Like I'm more of a hands-on person, physical, like labor. Mm -hmm. and for me, knowing that, I know that military will be a great option for me. At the same time, you can't really choose the card that you dealt, you know, life. You get the card that you dealt. You only can play with the cards you dealt. So I was just winging it. School was there, going to school. My grandpa paid for my financial aid, you know, taking advantage of that. Uh, military was thinking about that, but the ADHD, that came up. They all messed up my stuff on there. But, yeah, so then um, I was in school, and then I came across that training program through Instagram because I was looking at a DM, and then I was going to do the training program and do it that way. I talked to somebody on the phone. They said, gave me a deal, 355. Um, was going to just do that because I'm really just trying to get out here and get this money for real, but I didn't know no other options. I'm just seeing it and like, hey, you know, I did do my research though before I, I ain't started, but I did do my research. I seen the YouTube videos, how a couple people 
went from doing regular jobs, making a hundred, two fifty thousand, five hundred thousand, things like that. I've seen the videos, but again, it's coming from somebody that don't have experience. So of course, it looks good yeah. to me. So <clears throat> yeah, he had it looking real shiny. He <laughs> he had it looking real shiny, bro. So I, I could definitely see how he was scamming because even. You know, once we pulled up his LinkedIn, it seems like he's running a corporation with a lot of employees, but he's listing his students as employees. But the most important thing that I really like that you said is that, you know, school isn't for you. And that's a very wise position because sometimes people are like, oh, if I just get through the school for this, then I like the job. Hell nah. Like the job is similar to the school usually. Right. I remember when I was going through, uh, I was about to go into law school and I was like, damn, this is boring as shit. Like doing all of this particular kind of study for the LSAT. And then people were like, yeah, well, when you're a lawyer, it's a lot of reading. I was like, damn word. I thought you was just in the courtroom. Like if the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. Like I thought you was just saying clever shit in the courtroom, but really it's a lot of reading. It's a lot of this background kind of study. So what I would recommend for you is if you're more of a physical tactile person, then you want to get a job to where you can get paid the most for what you have to lay your hands on. So for example, every time you take a car to a, you me to like an exotic dealership to get like, you're going to get your, your Lambo repaired. You're going to get the Rolls Royce worked on. Those mechanics are making serious money because they're specialists in a very rare car or a very expensive car. So mechanics, electricians, um, these are the kind of things you might consider because it might be a better fit. Now, one thing I can tell you for sure is um, what Joshua does, and he'll be able to tell you better than I do, but another saint, I don't know if he wants me to say his name, but another saint uh, who's also very solid, very hardworking guy. He came from the professional uh, personal training background. He's going through uh, studying to get that certification right now. And Nick already got it. The other guy's going through right now, but it's rigorous. You hear me? It's real study. And he, he's really having to grind with the study. Now, me, similar to yourself, see, I'm good at school, but I never liked it. I'm good at school, but I didn't like it, though. You feel me? So that's why I didn't decide to do a lot more of it. As soon as I was done, I got up out of there. And if I could do it again, I probably wouldn't do it again. So I know that that's not the way that I like to do my business. I don't want to be sitting at a desk, like hunched over doing this all day. Like, that's not what makes me feel happy. If you can figure that out early and line up jobs that make sense for how you actually enjoy getting work done, you're going to be in a good position. In fact, one of the guys I did a consultation with, and I hope you can one day get connected with him, um, he's actually doing security too. I think we got a lot of guys doing security, but, but he's doing security too. And right now he's working on do, uh, creating his own security uh, company. So he could basically send out guys as uh, bodyguards and things like that. And that's a win, bro. So there's a, a lot of different ways to move. So one thing I do recommend, we're we going to connect you with Joshua so you can hear, hear that out. I think you should also connect with the other saint who's going through the process just to hear what the study side is like, because you might not even want to do that and then make some decisions from there. Definitely, definitely. I appreciate that. Like when you realize like it's so many things out here that you could do, it kind of gets overwhelming for the fact that it's so many ways you could get out here and get paid. Like, you could really be paid out here. And it's like, for me, I just know, like, do you ever, did you ever feel like when you was growing up, like you was meant to be great? Like, it, like I'd be in a lot of situations where a lot of opportunities be given to me, where it's like a lot of people not as fortunate as me to be in these situations. And it's just like, I know I have it. Like, it's there. Like, it's so close yet, but so far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel you on that one. One thing I could tell you for sure is I remember my grandmother, I got me this like remote control car. It was a Jag. You hear me? It was like this green Jaguar. I used to look at that joint. I'm like, I'm going to be rolling some stuff like this. I already know. And so for sure, I knew that I was going to win. But one thing I knew for damn sure is that I couldn't live like the other people around me were living. I couldn't think like them. I couldn't behave like them. And that's the key is actually getting the work in. And if you have faith, you're going to continue to actually do the work. If you have the faith, like if you really believe, but some people say they believe, but they don't really believe. And this is how you know. Look at the number of people that's watching this segment. You hear me? This segment is specifically about making money, right? But if I turn around and did a segment that was about how to get a bitch, man, it'd be a lot more people watching. But if you ask everybody on the segment about how to get abroad, do you want to be rich? They would all say yes, but they don't really feel like that. 
they say it, but they don't really feel it. They don't believe it's possible. So you, you'll you see what's real for people based on how they move and what their actual actions are. So as long as your actions line up with what you're saying, you're going to get there. Uh, and I, I just want to, I know you got a whole thing. So I don't want to take too much time. I just got one more thing. Um, Actually, I, I got two jobs. Okay. I work five days a week, but I got two jobs. Mm -hmm. The other job I work on a weekday. Um, I actually got the job from, like I said, the opportunities. I was going somewhere else, seeing a young cat. Um, he was walking. He was doing security. Had seen his coat. So I was like, "Hey, network, networking myself. Hey, my name Tuan Pratt. I got my source license. Yada yada yada." He connected me to his boss, and the crazy thing is, me and his boss is the same age. Like, he's right. a, um, he's twenty two, and I'm twenty two, and right. it's like. I be seeing them roll up. I got this security uniform on. I be seeing them roll up with the suits. I'm like, damn, I, I see them roll up with the Chrysler. I got my little, you know, you know, um, old car, 2007. But my confidence say otherwise. Right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, it just it, it makes me want to better myself. Like I see him and we the fact that we the same age and he was telling me that he just outworked everybody because when I did the interview, we did it outside. He was telling me he outworked everybody. He was networking with everybody in the room. Um, just being more, more of everybody, more of what everybody wasn't basically. Mm -hmm. And that's how he got to that position. And like seeing that when it's though we the same age, it really like know that I can go places. Right. I, it'd be the little things like that, that like really like, wow. Like I'm so close, but yet so far. So it's like, you know what? <clears throat> that's true. Close and far. That's that's true because you can break through really quickly. In as much as you know, even like cats in his YouTube game. Like I remember when I uh, went on Fresh and Fit. <clears throat> I think they had like seventeen thousand subscribers. You know, and then like within they had a meteoric rise within a very short amount of time. Now, granted, it still probably for them felt like a lot of time and work, maybe like it was a year or two years, but you know, what's a year or two years if you get to ride Rolls Royce now, right? Like what, what's a year or two years if you get to ride Lambos, right? And that's the key. So when you look back, it feels short when you're in it, it feels long and hard. But when you look back, you're like, and that, that was, that was kind of quick. That was kind of easy. Like now I'm, now I'm good. Like I can never go below a certain level now. Cause you know, even when wealthy, if a wealthy person says that they're broke, that doesn't mean they have no money. If a, if a person is what they're like, oh man, I'm broke. That might mean that like their, their money's tied up for a little bit, or they, they only sitting on 40,000 cash, you know, but if a broke person say they broke, like, that mean they asked about to get evicted, you know, like things change. So like once you get your knowledge together, you'll never be able to fall below a certain level because you got money machines. You know, you have your money in different things that are going to support you and take care of you. But it was a pleasure to meet you, brethren. Uh, keep me updated with the success. And we already got you plugged in. So definitely tap in with those saints. They're good people. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's all love. Peace to the saints, man. Peace to the saints. Um, Keyshawn, what did he do? Man, these boys, these, these <laughs> every last one of them is in their clubhouse right now, huh? <laughs> every last one of them doing a scary movie scene, huh? I feel like they're about to turn on a flashlight under their face and tell a scary story. <laughs> they all over here making s'mores and shit. <laughs> these niggas all in the same room with sleeping bags and shit. Yo, Keisha, absolutely. Congrats on that first product. Um, the, the running belt is a phenomenal product. For you guys who haven't had the running belt, I actually got mine, what was that, like three years ago? My running belt lasted for three years. It's crazy. Uh, it's a phenomenal product. If you're going on a jog, you need somewhere to hold your iPad or your iPad, your I, your AirPods and your phone. You're going to want the running, uh, running and as well as your keys, you're going to want to get this product, I'm absolutely going to get it. And can you drop that link in, in the chat if you haven't already? Talk to me, Brethren. Thank you, Saint. Um, I'm actually I was about to go on a date where I am still, but like <laughs> I stopped turned off the live uh -huh. and the, the stream yard link was sent to me, so I just joined. I didn't okay. know if you like 
I, oh, but thank I appreciate you promoting the product. Thank you. Oh, no, I got you. I got you. It's a good product. So I'm happy to promote it. Okay. So you're actually about to head to a date right now. Yeah, but I'm in the car trying to fix my radio. Like, cause she, she upstairs. Are oh, she upstairs right now? <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, man. Just don't take her to cheesecake. <laughs> She's taking me up, and then I'm going hey. to pay for the dinner, though. I ain't going to cap, but she's Okay, me all right. <laughs> Wait, when you say she's taking you out, does that mean she's driving? Oh, no. Well, how's she taking you out if you're paying? No, she paying. She paying for okay. the first event. Then I just told her I'd cover the second thing. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. That's love. That's what's up. She's, she's putting in a, a contribution, and that's always good. That lets you know she's more serious and invested. You hear me when... It's easy for a chick to just show up and get free stuff. So that lets you know she's not out here in these streets too much. That's beautiful. That's good to hear, brethren. Anything I can answer for you before you hop off? Um, no, session session running shoes coming soon. Boxing shoes coming soon. Absolutely. Down the way. How soon? December 25th, around Christmas range. So oh, okay. So they need to save a little, save at least a hundred some dollars so they set that aside so they can make that order. Yeah, they're one hundred and twenty three ninety nine. Okay, and then the bundle coming is gonna be one thirty nine ninety nine. It's gonna be a good bundle, Sprint Spar bundle. That's a good bundle, and especially if you if you think that you are boxing training, you must be running. So they definitely gonna need that running. But if they get in the boxing shoes, all right, peace Thank to you, the saints. saints. Absolutely, peace to the saints. Shout to the ballers. Twano two a.m. writes. Thank you. What? Okay, fantastic. He writes, thank you for these type of live streams. I'm running into a problem with a hat I just designed. Okay, this is interesting. I have a small YouTube following I'm looking to sell, uh, to sell to, but I'm not getting any <laughs> sales and get like that. Do you have any advice looking uh, to book a consultation soon? Okay, let's talk about it. It really get like that. Uh, yeah, you take that off screen. Peace and Saints, how are you? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. How you doing today? First of all, I appreciate you for doing this live stream for sure. Absolutely. I appreciate you turning on the goddamn lights, man. Indeed. Indeed. So I just made a hat. Uh, I, I can show you right now. Let me show you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's see what you got. And I Did you drop the link question. for it? Uh, I didn't drop the link. Um, yeah. Drop that link, link in the chat for us. Okay. Let me see. Or matter of fact, nah, nah. Do this. Tell me what the link is. I'm going to type it in. All right. So it's just Toronto2am.co. Tono2am.co. And I got a question about like these manufacturers too. I don't know if I'm being like, if they just want to make some more money off of like little things that I'm ignorant about or what's going on. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. So I got that. Nice. And then my YouTube, because I figure like I get about maybe close to 200,000 views a month. So I figure I can at least get like, two percent of that to, to to you know what i'm saying buy this hat it's only like forty dollars like i can do something okay let's look at product real quick so let's look at product and then we'll take your question all right so here here's okay. your, your your site so clicked it we got the t on the red hat going down we got a couple views on it looks like we might have, okay there we go so it looks like we got some good, some good stitching on the front. 2 a.m. on the side. Let's see if it's a fitted. Yeah, it's a, it's a fitted for sure. I didn't show the back. Though. I don't have a picture of the back of the hat on there. Okay. Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things. So one, from a business uh, standpoint, some questions you didn't ask me, but I'm going to just tell you anyways. And mind you, I grew up on fitteds, man. Like y'all, y'all just starting to mess with this, right? Yeah, I grew up on fitteds, bro. Like, I mean, I'm talking yeah. about like motherfuckers used to have like 30, 40 fitteds, like in real life, not pretend like 30, 40 fitteds, like Mitchell and that shit, throwback shit, crazy shit, all colors. And the thing about fitteds, I forget, I can't even remember right now what size I wore, like a seven and a half, seven and five eighths. I don't even remember. But the challenge with fitteds is one sizing people have to actually know their size so that's a sales issue for you as a businessman so that's why the snapbacks are such a great thing from for the seller side because you could sell that shit to anybody big head ass so that's mm. number one people have to know their actual size so that's a barrier to, to the sale and then number two you started off with maybe it's your brand color but it's also an unusual color now granted my brand colors are red black and white right Okay. Now that allows me to transition between the three of them. And we know the ones that are going to sell the best is black. 
Now you're selling an actual red hat. Now I grew up in Pasadena, so that's fine. But uh, you grew up in some other places is not as not a color you just want to be sporting. And mm. even so, red is more of a strong fashion color or fashion statement. So generally, I always recommend people who are doing uh, products, especially fashion products, you want to start off with black, navy blue, or gray. Black, navy blue, or gray, okay. like those very basic colors. So maybe, I don't know if this is your brand color or just you wanted some pop, but that's a little harder of a place to start. Uh, so that's number one. So your two impediments right now, you don't have to change this. You don't have to fix this. This is just me letting you know. Number one, it's a fitted hat. I don't, I used to own like 30 to 50, uh, 30 to 40 fitteds, and I don't even know my size anymore. So that's a problem. I, if I want to order right now, I feel like I might order the wrong size. So I wouldn't order. So that's number one. The number two, the color, I actually like red, obviously, because like my brand colors are red. So I would get it. But most people, they tend to go black, gray, maybe blue because they're simple. Uh, so those are two issues. Then number three, your, your storefront doesn't look good, but it doesn't need to look good because you're selling it from your YouTube. So you're just giving them a link anyways that goes direct to product. So that doesn't even matter. So right. now you want to look at that. Go ahead. I was going to ask you, do you think I should even sell a hat to like a YouTube audience? Because I got like different type of ages. So I don't know if a, a different product might be ideal. Let's look, let's look at your channel real quick. Um, okay. Is the channel just uh, youtube.com slash Twano 2 AM? Indeed. All right. So let me see if I can actually get Okay. Let's see. All right, all right we ready, y'all. Yeah, let's get it, man. I'm sorry for the delay time. I know I've been all right, let's just see what it says it's about. Give me a second. I want to figure out what your channel is about. So your banner says most authentic. Okay, so I'm assuming you're being authentic about something. I thought there was like an about button supposed to be here. Yeah, it took it away recently, too. I don't know what the hell that button where that button is gone. Okay, so it says uh, once we were warriors, American reacts. I guess you're reacting to a movie there. I'm just going to scroll here, reacting to a documentary. I guess you react to movies? Uh, movies, many things. Um, different type of videos. Like I kind of go off of the comments, but it's just a whole... It's not okay, really one type stuff. of video. Right? Okay, cool. random things. So the reason I ask you is because generally when you're selling merch or fashion products, here's a really important thing to understand in the fashion business, which I don't think is a good business. Just side note, I don't think the fashion business is a good business. All right. So uh, I don't know what country you're in or what city you're in, but uh, I'm assuming you probably have like some forks and knives and spoons that you eat with. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what's up. Me too. I do. Okay. So uh, what brand are your forks and knives and spoons? I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. I, I have gold forks and knives and spoons like re in real life. Like my forks, spoons and knives are actually gold. I don't even know what brand they are. So I, I spent extra money to get the gold ones, but I don't know what brand they are. Now, conversely, uh, your hoodie, what brand is that? I, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Word. That's impressive. Okay, now let me give you one. Now let me give you the kicker. Your shoes, what brand are those? Uh, Nike. Yeah. Uh, have you ever bought any shoes recently that you just didn't know the brand of at all? No. Nah, yeah. So pretty much there's some things that are heavily brand dependent, like shoes and fashion tend to be one of those things. You generally are going to know the brand of it. Your forks yeah. and knives, like nobody ever knows the brands of their forks and knives unless they're like a very wealthy person or like a woman who's all about culinary arts. So I say that to say this. Some things, the brand is irrelevant. The quality is relevant. The utility is relevant. The color is relevant. The print is relevant. Brand doesn't matter at all with forks and knives. With clothing, with shoes, the brand is extraordinarily important. So number one, you have to have brand when you're creating fashion, you want it to be successful. So now let's talk about your brand. When I advise people on how to create brand, which brand usually follows product. In this case, you are the product because you're the YouTuber. That being the case, I say, what are three things you want to represent? Are you asking me that question? I'll give you an example so you could think while well, I'm giving you an example, right? Uh -huh. All right. So Marquette Devon Bird, what are three things you want to represent? 
Okay, Marquette, number one, wants to represent authenticity. So just realness. Boom, I want to represent realness. I want to represent goodness, you know, morality, right? I want to represent playerism. You dig? So like he's real, he's honest, and he's a super player. And you see me consistently representing that through my brand, right? So when you are able to clearly and consistently convey certain values that goes into your brand. So when I wear your hat, like when people see that hat, it might not have the brand significance of Jordan or Nike, but it has a specific brand significance of 2AM and whatever your brand represents. So whether it's humor or fill in the blank. So what are your three things that you would say your brand should represent? So number one, authenticity. That's why the banner said most authentic. I was good. That was going to be like my brand kind of, that was going to be the main look. I was going to have a shirt saying most authentic. And then the little logo that was under the banner or right under most authentic, that's a dose AM. So the dose is for, you know, that's two in Spanish. I didn't get that much feedback on that. The red hat, I got a lot of feedback on. So it was going to be, so I would say authentic, authenticity is, is one. Mm -hmm. Two, self-respect. And I really can't come up with a third off the top of the head right now. I can't really tell you, but those okay, two for enough. sure. Yeah, and two is good enough. You never want to go more than three. Two is good enough. Great. So yeah. then you got the hat with the with the T. Now here's the interesting right. thing, just from a, a brand standpoint. When I look at the hat with the T, I'm like, all right, this. And let me go back to the product. Damn, I think I mm -hmm. I close that tab. But anyways, the hat with the T on it. When I look at, it, I'm like, okay, maybe this is a sports team. Right. Mm -hmm. And it could be because you like, for example, in my neighborhood, they used to wear the hat with a P on it because uh, it signifies not the pirates. That's what, what it's actually really for. But it sign signifies a, a local gang. So it just got the P on it. Now, how would a T similarly could be a sports team? Conversely, with your brand, I feel like it would have made more sense if it said 2 a.m. on it. You feel me? Yeah. Right. Yep. Just from yep. a, like a uniqueness standpoint to where I could look at it and I'm not like, oh, is that like the texas sun devils or like some team that i can't think of right now but if it had the 2 a.m i'm like that's for sure not a team like that's some other shit so i think that would have been an interesting thing so i say that to say from a product standpoint a black hat where it says 2 a.m on it i think would be way colder and people would be way more inclined to fuck with it so that's number one okay now number two you have questions on these manufacturers so talk to me so on the manufacturer okay She, she says that products sell better when you wear them shits. And she said, you ain't wearing that goddamn hat in none of them videos. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Oh, yeah. it, it, I, I, so do you, have you, have you dealt with this in your early stages of selling products? Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do it too much. I kind of don't want to promote it too much for whatever reason. I don't know why it's right. like that, but I feel weird. Uh, whenever I just, yeah. No, nah, you don't want to be too salesy. That's real talk. But here's the thing. Like if, if you got good drip, you feel me? You got good drip. At some point, people are gonna be watching the video and then like, ah, that that sweatshirt is colder than a bitch. And that's when you just drop the link in the chat. You feel me? So if the okay. quality of the drip is there, people are gonna ask about the drip. That's the mm. key right there. You ain't gotta say nothing about it because you're right. You you sound too salesy. And so when mm. you just got it on deck, it's product placement. They get to see it a lot and they might be like, oh, like that might be like relevant. Now, here's the thing: you wearing that red hat with the T, I wouldn't even think that was your drip. Even mm. though your name starts with a T, but if you wear in a hat with the 2 a.m., I'm like, that's your drip for sure. Mm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. I see what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. So with the manufacturers, what's really going on? Um, so on the inquiry, it says the prices should be between 2.5 to 7.5 per unit. Right. With the minimum order quantity of 100. So whenever I give them my design and everything, they're saying they're boosting it to 8.5. They're boosting the 8.5 and they're saying only because of my design but as you can see my design is not too much going on it's just and then it's, it's just this and i actually because uh, it's in three places back. i got you yeah okay that's what it is yeah okay. yeah no nah, they're not bullshitting you so right. because you got it in those three different or actually four locations you got the front the back and both sides right okay yep yep that's it yeah yeah that's what's getting you and 8.5 okay. is not bad because you're retailing at 40 bucks All right Around yeah, so, yeah, so uh, out the door, you you probably let's just say you getting hit for ten bucks per uh, per unit on production costs, and then you getting hit for ten bucks on shipping to the consumer. 
Um, so it's like 20 bucks down the drain in terms of cost of goods and shipping. And you get about, you know, 19, 18 bucks in profit per unit. That's not bad at all. You can rock with that. Those red hats, that's the kind of thing that, you know, you might have to hold on to them. And as you grow the following, you're going to be able to get those out the door. But remember, simplicity is the key in all things. So like you got the motherfucking four different uh, stitches, like four different sewed mm -hmm. logos on that mug. Bro, that's see. a lot. That's a lot going on, bro. Put that two a.m. on the front of a black hat. You wear. People say you can wear black with everything, which is a goddamn lie. But since they think that's true, black is the way to go. Two a.m. on the front. You might put something on the back because nobody wants to turn their shit backwards and it's just blank. You hear me? Like it's a random ass blank hat. So you might put the two a.m. on the on the back, or you might put the T on the back. You hear me? Like whatever you're trying mm. to do, put something simple call it a day i think you get and then wear the motherfucker like we we just mentioned i think you get off of. yeah but don't Indeed. throw in the red ones i would damn sure produce the black ones because the thing is this before you're really well known because there are people that be in canada like with my shit on and people like oh you listen to the saint in the center be like yes i do you know like enough people like will recognize my shit that they can get some juice off of that but at the stage that your channel is at you know, I'll be saying crazy shit. People fuck with me and won't even subscribe to my shit because I just say such crazy shit. But the thing right. is that at the subscriber count that you're at right now, if you mm. put a 2 a.m. on that bitch, it's going to look cold. You dig? Mm. Nobody even has to know about the channel so people can wear it just because this shit look cold. And that's why you don't want to have too much stuff on it. Okay. I yeah. appreciate it, man. Thank you for the help. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Sure. And, and you're, you're a smart man. I'm sure you're going to be very successful and I'm wishing you continued right. success. Keep us updated. Yes, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. Peace of the saints. Shout out to uh, Jose. And Jose rocks with us for a long time. He was at uh, conferences and all that good stuff. Baller alert. Indeed. Shout out to the ballers out here. Jose writes, peace to the saints. Indeed, peace to the saints. Limitless writes, peace to the saints. Hope all is well. Baller, uh, the ballers and showed up, huh? The ballers and showed up. They outside today. Shout out to the ballers. Peace of the Saints. Hope all is well, Mark. But I have three products I want to converse with you about on a console. Uh, that's what I like to hear. This man said, I, I got three of them things. Come through then, bro. What info do I need to have on the products for you to have the most constructive feedback? I have measurements and some materials for one of my ideas. Yeah. See, you're going to perform best in life when you don't make anything into too heavy a lift, right? So take what you got, set up the consultation, and let's get rocking and rolling because I trust that you'll have enough for us to get into it. But, you know, I don't want this to feel like it's like a heavy lift, like you need to come and research everything because the worst thing in the world is to do a whole bunch of research on something that's irrelevant. And when I say irrelevant, you might get into the consultation. I say, hey, summarize the three product ideas you summarize the three and i say okay look man those two garbage uh, respectfully those two are not going to make you money this one this is the winner let's double down on this one and let's use this consultation to work out how you can get product ready to go how you can get mark uh, get to market and get you some bread so we're going to use most of the consultation to work on that one product. So there's no need for you to come into the consultation having done a bunch of research on two products that potentially will not be the ones that you ultimately work on. So don't make it a heavy lift. Book your consultation, show up with what you got, and we'll talk through it. Shout out to Jeremy. He writes, I also been interested in starting a product-based business, but haven't had the capital. I'm saving up to move to NYC. I need to have a consultation with you on product, hopefully after the move. Absolutely. And um, we got a lot of saints in uh, NYC. Definitely tap in with Justin, the executive over there. Very good guy. Uh, very talented, creative. He'll be a good guy to plug in with. We we got a lot of guys over there. Arthur, yeah. all the yeah. folks. They Absolutely. They meet up for dinner all the time. So it's a beautiful thing. May I may I acknowledge T comes in by Cash App. Shout, shout out to T, always supporting the work. Had the pleasure of meeting as well. Hector Smart. Oh, yeah, yeah. The young man who's uh, in accounting. Yeah, that might be a good one for him to check out the how to invest in real estate. Actually, this is perfect. This this session that Hector bought is entitled How to Invest in Real Estate Property and Commercial Real Estate. You said what? Yeah, Michael. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Michael 
This is the one. Uh, drop the link for him. And shout out to Cole. He writes, keep doing these lives. Peace to the saints. Sir, yes, sir. Caught up there? Fantastic. Now, I love to hear from hustlers and people earning. And you know, when I say you got to push your business to success or push it to failure, but remember to tweak in the process and in the tech business, we call it pivoting, which is to make those minor adjustments. And just like with uh, 2 a.m. who just got off, you know, I think I think he has some great uh, opportunity, honestly, like that kind of a, a small tweak is like you went from a red hat to a black hat. You just opened up a significant market because see me, I'm a wild boy. I'll wear a red hat. Most people won't wear a red hat, but they'll damn sure wear a black hat. So just a little tweak like that, you change it from the T to the 2 a.m. Now your hats are flying off the shelves. Those are the things that you want to do that are smart. So shout out to the folks who who are willing to make the adjustments to find success. It's out there. You just got to locate it. You dig? Shout out to Giovanni. Oh, with the baller alert. He writes, let's ball out. Peace to the saints. Comment in the chat. So Gio has a comment in the chat. It might be suppressed. She doesn't see it right now, but go ahead and pop it in if anyone else sees Gio's comment. Okay, fantastic. He writes, peace to the saints. Shout out to the big homie. Men, send in what you owe. A like, a comment, a share. Saint also booked a consultation with you a few weeks ago. Indeed. Are we are we going to go through with the product idea? Absolutely. And I actually just ordered some samples on your behalf. So it's a short, it's a pair of shorts, a product, which is in this case, it has the shorts with the compression short underneath it and a pocket for the cell phone. So it's basically like the ultimate athletic short. I should have the sample coming in within 15 to 20 days. It takes a while from China. I got it in two different colors. I got it in a black. I got it in a dark gray and two different sizes. Got it in a medium and got it in a large. And those are the things we want to test out. And then what we'll do once we verify that the quality is there, we'll pop a logo on it. We'll, we'll probably take a poll, see if they want the, the Janus logo or the S logo. We'll pop a logo on it. It'll be the new uniform short. And then we'll rock from there. So, yes, that'll be the one. And shout out to all the saints who uh, invest in themselves so that they can start earning. Like I'm really proud of St. Flo's. I mean, St. Flo's um, did the uh, he did the gold on gold version of this bad boy right here. You dig in this one. I, I'm enjoying too much. He did the gold on gold. He only has, I think, 17 left. You hear me? So, oh, by the way no more coming. So the goal once it's done is done. So if you want one of those, go ahead and get, get at after it is at mdblabel.com. What's that? I just did. Yeah. And mind you, you, I can't hear you through my headphones most of the time if you're wondering. So we'll definitely have to plug you in next time. Ballers, the ballers have assembled the parking lot filled with the rolls, the Bentleys, the Lambos, the Guineas. He writes, very much appreciate it. Definitely we will put to use Peace of the Saints. Absolutely. I might have to mess around and figure out my hat size. Next time we're in the mall, remind me to put on a hat so I can figure out. I had to fit it in years. It might, might make me feel some kind of way. I was super hood when I used to wear fitteds. You know, like when Superman put on his cape, he just turned. When Batman put on his uniform, he turned from Bruce Wayne to Batman. Something come over him. It might get like that. They might not need to see me in a fitted. Anyways. So fools often say that women wait at the finish line and gather around the winners. That's a lie. Everyone waits at the finish line and gathers around the winners. Very few people are going to be there with you to build a foundation. Very few people want to invest in you when you don't have anything to show. Very few people are going to believe in your idea. Very few people are going to support you. Everyone's going to wait until you win. And then they're going to be like, well, you're smart. I always knew you were going to win. You're ambitious. You're a hustler. I always knew you were going to be successful. And you're like, 
nah, bro, you, you didn't know that. You didn't feel that way. Nah, you, you, you did not feel that way until I, I made a bunch of money. And now you're like all on my meat. Like, like you always knew. Nah, you didn't always know. There's just a couple people who are really going to rock with you based off of your character from the beginning. And here, here's the thing. If nobody rocks with you, that's fine. You know, that's fine. So you just got to go ahead and get it done. The manosphere lies and claims that it's just the women waiting at the finish line to choose the winners. No, when people get across that finish line and everyone knows they're a winner, everyone all of a sudden wants to be around them. Just like I told you, when I was sitting in that parking lot and a neighbor I'd seen many times, he never really says much. And then he see me in the whip and he's like, oh, that's my favorite car. Oh, hey, man, what's your name? Like, nah, bro, like kill it. Knock that off, man. This is why I never go to the events in this building because like, I'm not trying to slap fives and be buddy, buddy with y'all because this is where y'all live. This is just where my studio is. You dig? So now nah, we, we don't need to slap fives. Everyone wants to choose the winners or, and be cool with the winners at the end of the race. That's not just women. No one wants to build a foundation with you and you'd be a wise person to get in at the foundation level. That's why I was telling the gentleman that, Hey, you know, if you're doing an accounting degree and you're not pleased with your job, and he's with Capital One, that's a great company. It's a big company. There's a lot of room and there's a lot of a lot of opportunity to learn corporate culture and get in their innovation lab, which I'd showed him the link for that. I hope he looks into it. But say he was with a rinky dink company, which he's not. He's with a great company. Um, if he's with a rinky dink company, he'd be wise to say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and you know, take my accounting skills, go into a, a tech startup that, you know, has, you know, less than five employees, but it's in a bleeding edge field and they got a good product and they have a reasonable uh, revenue model. And I'm going to make some contributions there. And the reason you would do that is because you come in early enough at the foundation and you're going to be appreciated. You might even get some equity in the business and no one wants to come in at the foundation. That's how you get in and you become the one, two, three, four, or five guy, uh, fifth guy in a, a company called Facebook, uh, Apple, and all this other stuff. Because here's the thing, when Zuckerberg was him and his buddy and him and the Vin uh, Winklevoss twins, and it was like less than five people, nobody believed. Nobody believed at that stage. When it was Steve Jobs and um, uh, Wozniak, nobody believed at that level. So you go in and you put faith in people who are real hustlers and have good product. You have to be able to see talent and see people who are clever and know how to work hard. And more importantly, they know how to make adjustments. That's what being successful in a marketplace is about making adjustments. You turn the hat from red to black. You turn the logo from a T to a 2 a.m. You turn the logo from four different places where you got stitching to just two. You've now reduced the cost of the product significantly. Those are the adjustments that turn you into a winner. You dig? Yeah, that Miss Andrea, and, and this is not a shirt. This is actually a sweatshirt, you dig? So it's perfect for the winter, which is uh, what we're in right now. Exactly, and boom, there's the link. Boss up. Boss up. By the way, shout out to the ballers. That's the second baller alert. So he really balling, not fake balling, because there'd be fake ballers these days. Shout out to the real ballers. He writes, thank you, Marquette. This is Limitless Aspirations. Thank you, Marquette. I tend to overthink, uh-oh, and overanalyze, uh-oh. I definitely appreciate the advice. I look forward to making a barefoot training shoe. Okay, that's what's up. I'll, I'll be inclined to cop something like that. <clears throat> I got a number of different running shoe types because I run a lot. Um, and I'm about to increase my running as well, especially with this running belt coming out. I might as well, it's time to up it back up, huh? It's time to up it back up. And he writes a uh, barefoot training shoe, which is the main product I'm considering. Any advice? Well, a zero drop barefoot running shoe, I think is a reasonable product. Make sure that it doesn't look like a, a, a water shoe. You know, what I'm talking about those shoes that people wear when they're swimming. Yeah. Make sure it doesn't look like a water shoe, reasonably stylish, you know, maybe do it in two different blues, like, uh, you know, two tone blues, uh, darker blues. Um, yeah. Uh, make sure that the laces are high quality shoelaces. Runners often have issues with shoelaces. So make it high quality shoelaces. You'd be wise if it's those kind that you can pull and like use a little clip to kind of like tighten the shoe so you don't actually even have to tie the shoes. And um, that's about it, man. Yeah, I, I say go ahead and get that product out. It should be reasonably 
uh, quick to market because there's not a lot of signs between uh, with barefoot running shoes, no matter what they'd like to claim. And and I think it's a an interesting concept, barefoot running shoes. And I personally don't find that they've really made the impact that I think they should have or that they once had when you had the five, what was it called? The five finger, the Vibrams or Vibrams. They, they made an outsole for the barefoot running shoe. And um, I think they started getting sued. Honestly, I think they might have like, I don't think they went out of business, but I think they went from being a shoe company to just making outsoles for other shoes. But it's worth a go. I'd love to see it. Um, can you start getting some food on deck? Miles writes, Peace of the Saints. I had to show support for this important live on self-improvement for us men in a real way. He writes, my one question is, why do the majority of black American males struggle to be elite? That's quite a big question. I keep seeing black males like T.I.'s son, born into wealth, wanting to be a hoodster and a gangster. Yeah, isn't that funny? So, number one, T.I.'s son has a, a multitude of problems. Um, good Lord. And, and we should have known T.I.'s son was going to look like that because look at T.I.'s wife. Ooh, God, I want to take that back. That wasn't right. No, that was not right. I take that back. I take that back. Strike that from the record. T.I., I apologize. Tiny, I apologize. Don't ever talk about anyone's wife, especially when they haven't said anything bad to you. That was not right. I feel bad. Anyways. The ball looked like a goddamn alien, an albino alien. Uh, that being the case, uh, he is going to struggle for relevance and for uh, notoriety and respect and to be appealing to women. So he's going to go out of his way to do anything he can to be sexually appealing. And one thing that we know is not going to be his go-to is being like good looking. He's not going to be like the Denzel Washington black guy, right? So he's going to go to the tough guy side. That's another way to get respect and uh and uh, stimulate attraction uh from the female right they're attracted to the pretty boy or the tough guy and he went for the tough guy side of things because he ain't have a chance at the pretty boy side and mind you i say you know be suspicious of ugly people and broke people now with regards to black uh, american males why do they struggle to be elite well uh there is a a lot of depth there but in short without giving a historically grounded answer in short, their biggest issue is knowledge of self. Most of these uh, black males in our society today are white supremacists, which is to say they don't believe that black is capable, black is any good. They do believe in their own inferiority. Certainly, they you know have an inherent, not inherent, but an uh, inbred, a, a, a learned sense that uh, whites are intellectually superior, more capable, more timely, you know, things like that, more civil. And, you know, in some ways, the evidence appears to show this. And so in their lack of self-knowledge, when you do not know the self, when you don't know who you are as an individual, but more importantly, on a biological scientific level, what does it really mean to be black? And then on a historical level, what are the accomplishments of your people? Have the black peoples of the earth ever been great? When you're not familiar with that, then you feel as though you're a part of a people who have only had enslavement as a history and who are doomed to only be successful at certain things that you've observed as be successful at on a consistent basis, that being athletics and entertainment. And so they have a lack of examples and a lack of character education and poor parenting come from bad families. And that's why we see this kind of behavior. And that is why we must spread the ism. The ism saves lives. Thank you for that question. And, you know, there are a lot of hoteps who would love to go deep into, well, slavery is like, we don't need to go that deep. We don't need to go that deep. Shout to uh, Mr. Alam. He writes, peace to the saints. Truly appreciate it. I also acknowledge Vernell. Sends intuition by a cash app. Much respect. This is the segment people appreciate. The hustlers, you dig? The winners. <laughs> this is the segment for the winners. Most important thing, last piece I have for you <clears throat> is marketing and visibility is key. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Another piece is you really got to want to win. So let, let's first go to that. You really got to want to win piece. I'm not going to name any names, but there have been more than one individual 
who has worked with me and they create a product and they put the product on the market and they often they create multiple products because that's the name of the game is try, try and try again. That's the name of the game. Created multiple products and they've created successful products. Huh? So they got a product, it's selling well, and then they decide to change to a new product. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is what we've been looking for. You got a product and it's making you money. Now, instead of getting a new product or a different product, no, we need to figure out how to multiply what we're doing here. So if you're making $400 a month in revenue from this product, now we just need to figure out, well, how do we make $1,000 a month? And then once we figure that out, then we need, how do we make 10,000? Once we figure that out, how do we make 100,000? We need to scale this product up until we reach market saturation. And by the time you saturate the market, you know, like 40, $30 million to your name. So let's go deep in this one product. But the problem is focus, focus, consistency, dedication. They want to try a new product. I'm like, damn, you just got this first one that's working. Why are we going to a new product? Let's make this one really good. Let's, let's work this product. <clears throat> and that's the problem is that lack of focus. And it, it even happens to me. So for example, we sold out all of the brown backpack briefcase and then we did a black backpack briefcase. Low key, partly because I wanted a black backpack briefcase. Like, for example, I'm wearing this outfit, it's going to go great with the black backpack. So it was great for me. But really, we could have continued selling the brown backpack briefcase infinitely. You feel me? Till we saturated the market, till we couldn't sell anymore. We could have sold a bunch more. I like my stuff to do limited runs, but I'm not really in the fashion business. I'm not trying to make that my more my main business. But you guys who are you know just getting into product based business, you get a successful product, you need to push that thing all the way through. And when you start being successful, don't shoot yourself in the foot. When you start to be successful, be thankful because this is what we've been looking for. And then figure out how do you grow that? The problem is that people start winning and then we realize they don't really want to win. Marquette, what are you talking about? People start winning and then we realize they don't really want to win. They got a product that's making money. Then they want to try a new product. What is going on in your rabbit brain? I kid you not in Vegas. You get to learn a lot about human nature uh, in the casino. Human nature is on display. I've seen situations where you got someone. You now, people are, are weird and superstitious. I, I really don't love to be around average people. I, I observe them every now and then. I've seen situations where you'll have a, 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 a dumb broad or walk up to a craps table or even a guy. Let's take a guy as an example. Walk up to a craps table. He'll get the dice and he, maybe he has like 50 bucks which if you are going to gamble with 50 bucks, you probably shouldn't gamble. You should probably just save your money. And so he starts throwing the dice and he wins money. And he just picks up the dice and he throws them again. And he wins money. He picks them up again. He throws them again. He wins the money. And so now he's winning money. So now the fourth time he picks up the dice, what does he do? <sighs> starts blowing on the dice, throws the dice, and then he loses all his money. My first thought in my head is like, you idiot. You picked up the dice, you threw it, you won money. You picked up the dice, you threw it, you won money. You pick up the dice, you threw it, you won money. You pick up the dice. And now you're blowing on the dice. Now, in reality, scientifically speaking, in terms of physics, in terms of science, blowing on the dice should not impact the outcome theoretically. But if you have found a way to win, why would you alter that at all? That's because psychologically you're a self-saboteur. You don't love yourself. You don't really want to win. You were winning. You were being successful. And then you changed something unnecessarily. And when you change something unnecessarily, you caused yourself to lose. That's what you did because you obviously did not want to win. Or what else I'll, I'll observe. You see some dumb bra go up to the craps table with her friends and she got gives her 50 bucks. She gets the dice. She throws the dice. She's winning money, picks up the dice, throws them again. She's winning money, picks up the dice, throws them again. She's being successful, picks up the dice, throws them again. She's winning money, picks up the dice, and she's about to throw them. And then she turns to one of the dealers and she says, hey, how do you lose? Like, when do you lose? And then they're like, oh, you lose when you throw the seven. She's like, oh, okay. And then she throws the dice, seven, out, lose. Everyone loses their money. <laughs> now, what does that teach you? Focus. Energy goes. Energy flows where focus goes why do you need to know how you lose? Like who's thinking about losing right now? Shouldn't you be thinking about winning and why in the midst of winning, are you asking, how do you lose? 
Wouldn't that be something you ask before you start the game? Or maybe you would just wait until you lose. As long as they're paying you money, why are we asking stupid questions? Let them keep paying you money. This is the psychology of the average human. The average human is a loser at heart. In here where it counts, they're a loser. In here where it counts, they don't really want to win. I don't like to be around them. They're losers. Poor people are poor for a reason. They do stupid stuff. <laughs> the guy's throwing the dice. All of a sudden, he went to blow on the dice. Girl's throwing the dice. All of a sudden, she asks, how do you lose? They don't want to win. They don't want to win. Because I tell you the difference. Someone who wanted to win, I would never go walk up to. Like, people all the time tell me to gamble. Do this. Do that. Do that. But no, I don't want to gamble. I don't want to learn how to play poker. Marquette Devon Burton has no clue how to play poker. So many people I know play poker. They always invite me. They tell me to learn how. No, I don't want to learn. I don't want to learn how to play poker. People always say, oh, the odds on Baccarat are great. Learn how to play Baccarat. I don't want to play Baccarat. I don't want to learn how to gamble. I'm good. Here's the thing. If I were to walk up to a Baccarat table, i tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to walk up to a Baccarat gambling table and then sit there and ask the dealer, hey, how do you play this game? Or ask somebody next to me who's a random idiot, hey, how do I play this game? <laughs> I'm not going to put my money at risk and ask strangers or ask people who are not financially well off how to play the game. I'm going to research at home in privacy, peace and comfort with great focus. And if I make the dumb decision to gamble and go play Baccarat, <clears throat> when I show up to the table, I'm going to play like I've been doing it for 10 years. They're going to look at me like, nah, it ain't his first time. Why? Because money's on the line. And more importantly for me, winning is at stake. And guess what? I always want to win. I don't care. We plant hopscotch. I want to win at it. You heard me? I always want to win. And I don't even want to start if I can't win. It's about the win for me, the victory. Most people, they don't want to win. They won't do what it takes to be victorious. They're playing games. They're not serious out here. So you know, you ain't going to win. You ain't got a chance to win. You're going into an environment where it's designed for you to lose and you're asking an employee of the casino. The casino is designed to take your money. You're asking an employee of the casino how to play the game. Now, is the employee going to lie to you? No, they're not. They're going to tell you how to play, but they ain't telling you how to win because if they knew how to win, they wouldn't be working as a casino dealer. They didn't tell you how to win. They told you how to play. Those are different things. Winning and playing are different. And people often are not paying attention in life. I'm always paying attention. No. He writes, Peace of the Saints. Oh, shout out. He got the man and woman, or the man and woman. He got the Saint in the Center boxing gloves. Those are cold as hell. And I, I really wish we could sell some more of those, but we sold all of them. I really wish we do because those were cold as hell. Two-tone boxing gloves. Come on now. He writes, Peace of Saints, how can I tell if I'm celebrating my achievements too much? <laughs> how many hours a week should I be working if I want to have a balance of work, relationships, and health? I live by myself in no car. Well, number one, you don't want to have a balance of these things. You want to have an integration of these things. A minimum number of hours you should work per week is 40 hours. That's a minimum. That's called full-time. So that's a minimum. And <clears throat> you should work up to as many hours as you feel comfortable for your success and your, your good health and your future and your security. The more, the better. I usually like to do it so that I work until I can't work anymore. And then I socialize in those hours that I'm still alert and awake, not sleepy, not tired, but burnt out from work. So I've worked as much as I can to the point of I feel like I'm like burnt out for the day, not in general, but just for the day. And then I'm willing to socialize because I'm still alert, awake, not sleepy, not tired. That's how I do it. And if you think you're celebrating too much, then maybe you are. But don't forget to celebrate. You must celebrate. Now, as I say, people tend to not be aware and awareness is critical. We call it being cognizant, being able to see what's going on, being intellectually aware. It's important. I was in a situation recently. <clears throat> I was at a resort. I was there uh, in the, the midst of a number of persons who were very wealthy. We're kind of like in a, a VIP area. <clears throat> I was the youngest person there by far. And an older gentleman, an older white guy who's clearly very successful as well. He had introduced himself. 
And, you know, we have a brief conversation, general conversation. And, you know, the staff is there doing what they do, uh, serving. And I'm familiar with the staff. He's familiar with the staff. And uh, I think I've maybe even seen him once or twice before. But anyways, uh, eventually I ask him a, a personal question. And I asked him this question, even though we, we don't know one another well, but he can see that I'm a younger man, so he can respect me asking him uh, for guidance and advice. And I know that he's successful. He knows that I'm successful. He's on my trajectory, right? So like he, he's in a position that makes sense within my life. I never ad- ask for advice from people who have less money than I do. I would not do that. I don't ask for advice from people who have the, like less than I do. You know, I would never even consider such a thing. So I asked him for uh, this piece of advice because <clears throat> he has years on me, got probably got like 30, 40 years on me of age. And so I asked him the advice and he answered really quickly. He knew the answer to this question. I asked the right person. I asked him, he answered it immediately and he was very certain about his answer. <clears throat> then eventually he leaves and a staff member who was there tending to both of us he says to me, he says, you know, Marquette, everyone's different. So, you know, that's his answer. He's like, but my answer is like, I'm 60 years old. My answer is this. And I, I listened to him because I am a hearer of a good word. But I, I was kind of like, it didn't occur to you that I've seen you many times. I've never asked you this one time ever. And I observed that you're significantly older than me. I've never asked you this question because I wanted to ask someone who, has more money than I do. So I was waiting and here he is. And I asked him because he's very, 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 very wealthy and he's on my trajectory. So I asked someone that's more like me on my trajectory. I didn't tell this guy that, but I was like kind of shocked that he like volunteered the advice, um, which doesn't mean it was bad advice necessarily, but I have to question it because he's not on my trajectory. But moreover, it shows maybe a lack of intellectual awareness of why I asked him that question, the the guy I asked instead of the the guy who volunteered the information. Huh? And those are the things that will separate us, our intellectual awareness. Can we read people? Can we interpret people? Can we see what's going on? Can we see what time it is? Can we figure things out without people telling us blatantly? Are we noticing subtle signs? That makes a major difference. Like for example, I did a deal, uh, an international deal and I spoke of this before, spent a lot of money with a, a woman, right? Spent a lot of money doing a business deal. And, you know, she, so she charged me for an orange juice. I think it was like $2, $3, $4. I can't remember. So I spent thousands of dollars with this woman, thousands. And then she, what? Tens of thousands. There you go. Tens of thousands with this woman, tens of thousands. And so she gave me a bill that included, it was an invoice for the tens of thousands that I'd spent with her and then an orange juice for $4. As soon as I saw that that orange juice was on there, I I was like, I'm never spending a penny with you ever again in life. I can't trust you. I cannot trust you. You are, you are too money hungry. Like if you needed to collect that $4, now mind you, I spent 10, 000, tens of thousands. I don't care about $4. $4 means nothing. And you know, it. we both know it means nothing to me. $4 means nothing, but it's such a slap in the face, but it speaks of your character that you're such a money grubbing little animal that you need every penny. So that lets me know you'll never do me a favor. You'll never do me a favor in business. So why would I do business with you? You're never going to give me a discount because you're collecting $4 that are irrelevant. So I'll never get a discount. You'll never do me a favor. And if we ever come into a disagreement, you're going to try to like do everything to recover money. You're going to do everything to steal money from me. So I can't trust you. And so as soon as that contract was done, I was like, okay, as soon as we're done doing business, never again. This person is rotten. They have no soul and no brain, more importantly. A smart person, even if they're not a good person, they might at least be a smart person. They're like, yeah, I'll give him a free orange juice. Just spent tens of thousands of dollars with me. Shit, uh, pack this man up four orange juices to go. Yeah, and, and can I get you a taxi? Uh, send my driver to take him back home. Take my car, send my driver, take him back home. Yeah, absolutely. He spent tens of thousands of dollars with me. Just met me 48 hours ago and spent tens of thousands of dollars. That's smart business. <laughs> this person's obviously a fool, which I don't trust him at all for that very reason of, of that kind of behavior. What can you do? 
And these are the things, again, intellectual awareness. You need to be aware. Pay attention, folks. Awareness and paying attention, oh, it'll save you. It'll save you heartbreak. It'll save you losing money. It'll save you getting cheated. It will save so much. Uh, shout out to Brandon. He just got Conference 2 footage, which includes lessons on entrepreneurship, specifically product-based business, marketing, sales, also relationships, and leadership. That's a lot of information. For 79 bucks, that's a lot of information. Shout out to David with the polar alert. Came in by Cash App. He writes, entering 2024, debt-free. Peace of the saints. Thankful for you, sir. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Thank you, David. And congratulations, debt-free. Feels good. Not to owe anyone anything. That's very good. Via PayPal. Ginsley writes, three-hour stream. Are we three hours in? Indeed. He writes, I got to support. I ended up not going through with the property, but I learned a lot with regard to what I want. And that's the key. It's all a process. That's why even when people do product-based business, I say, yeah, yeah, let's get through the full cycle of it. Whether it's successful or unsuccessful, doesn't matter. Let's run it back on another product. We're going to figure this out. That's life. You figure it out. So it's a beautiful thing. It's not like school. In school, when the test comes, you got to pass the motherfucker the first time. There's no redo. Life is the opposite. You get to keep redoing it. Like if you try to make a million dollars and you're not successful this year, does that mean you can't try again? Hell no. I'm trying every day, goddamn man. I'm trying every day. He writes, but I learned a lot with regards to what I want. Nothing helps you sleep soundly like walking away from a bad deal. Tuition. I hear that, bro. Absolutely. I agree with you there. I agree wholeheartedly. And that's a boss move as well. See, people don't know nothing about that. That's a boss move. That's top-notch stuff. You've tended to the food? Fantastic. Yes, the last piece is... Oh, yeah. I got so much game on this business stuff. I could go for years, but... One thing I want you all to listen, I, I hope uh, one particular saint is listening right now. You know, he stopped selling a, a particular item on Amazon, which is fine. But I, uh, I'm assuming that Amazon item has reviews on that listing. So if you're not going to sell that product and it has reviews on that listing, you have to realize that that listing has some value in it. So a real hustler is like, all right, I might not be selling this product anymore, but can I sell this listing to someone else? Is that possible? A real hustler is trying to sell whatever you can sell, you dig? And what I mean by that is this. You see, a hustler is like, all right, look, I could sell some orange juice, but I still got the orange left over that, I, that the juice is all squeezed out of, and I still got the peel. A real hustler is like, what can I do with this orange that has no juice in it, and can I sell the peel? Will anybody eat the peel? Maybe. So that's what a real hustler is, is always asking themselves is like, what can I sell? And that listing, even if you're not going to sell that product, so like, let's say on Amazon, you've been selling this uh, lip balm for you know five months and you got 10 reviews and they're good reviews or it's reasonably well reviewed and you don't plan to sell this lip balm any further. That's fine. But what if there's someone else who might want to sell lip balm? And you can start them off with this listing that already has five-star reviews or four-and-a-half-star reviews. That's worth something. Heck, yeah. So I'd I'd gladly try to sell the listing to somebody. There's so many opportunities that we don't think of. We leave things on the table that are there for the taking. Shout out to the ballers. The ballers are here, aren't they? They've appeared. Baller alert. Greatest clips. <laughs> appears to be Jabrizi. <laughs> Writes. Uh, how much money do you think is in there in the industry of curing loneliness in America? Well, cures have no money in them, right? I shouldn't say no, but they have very little money. Cures have very little money. Treatments have a lot of money. And it's been said by many conspiracy theorists and many business minds that, well, curing cancer or curing HIV AIDS that's not as profitable as treating cancer or treating HIV AIDS, right? When you have a terminal illness, uh, an illness that can last 30, 40 years, and I can medicate you every day of your life for you know three decades, that's a lot of guaranteed income. Whereas if I give you a, a cure, uh, then I only get paid one time instead of recurring revenue. And one thing we know for sure, and we know 
this because of uh, Martin Shkreli was a, a great example of this is that uh, there's going to be price controls. If we found a cure to HIV AIDS and the true market value of this cure, I mean, you're giving someone life, right? So, I mean, shit, that should be at least, in my opinion, probably at least 80,000, right? For the cure, 80,000 a head. But what's going to happen? Governments are going to get involved and they're going to put price controls on it. And they're going to say, you're denying people's right to life. This should be free to everybody. And then all of a sudden they're going to be charged with some bullshit like, like $400, $500, which you can still make a bag, but you ain't about to make a trillion dollar bag like you would have otherwise. And so instead, you know, people rather fleece you uh, for the ongoing uh, treatment. And so in as much as that's the case, we generally have treatments rather than cures. Human beings don't value the cure. They prefer the treatment. And human beings are ditzy, dim-witted, dishonest, and immature. And so that's why you find certain goofy things are more popular than the real deal. So I think curing loneliness uh, can make some money, but treating loneliness can make a tremendous amount of money. So that's a keen insight. He writes, I've noticed this is an increasingly popular topic with no real solution. And that's the beauty of it, isn't it? There is a solution, but there's generally not a solution that people are willing to work to earn. So I think that, um, yes, making an investment in, in this area is a smart thing. And for those who actually do want to be a part of something among great men, not just among some men, but be among great men, that's why we have this thing of ours, assassin. In fact, this Sunday, uh, Sunday service, arrive at 12 uh, p.m. if you're going to be here in person. And not only are we going to do Sunday service, we're going to do a workout afterwards. So we invite all the saints in Saint City or those who would like to drive in, come in, come in at assassin black on black, come in ready to work out. We're going to do our uh our lecture Sunday service on self-improvement and spirituality. And then after that, we're going to get in a quick little workout, nothing crazy, just a little bit of light work, get you guys in shape. And those are great opportunities to, you know, be uh, in contact with great men and, you know, and also great women as well. Also, because uh, we even have a number of the saints who have uh, met lady saints and have great relationships, long lasting relationships. They've been in. What were you saying? Yeah, this Sunday, tomorrow, tomorrow. 12 noon. Be here. Carrying on. Last piece, marketing and visibility. Often we think uh, we sometimes focus too much on product. The product's important. Marketing and visibility is even more important. You should You should have good product. You don't need great product, but you should have good product. But marketing and visibility, which is to say you could have the most extraordinarily innovative, high-quality product on the planet Earth, but if no one knows about your product, then no one's going to buy it. That's what marketing is, creating the awareness of your pro product, the visibility, so people know it exists. Then they can actually engage in that transaction and get you paid. So importantly, you have to have a voice, a platform to get your product out there, whether it's through running adverts on Instagram or using influencer marketing or whatever tactic you can deploy to, I, to get some visibility. So never forget about that piece, which is make a good product that has a unique value add that's reasonably simple, involves a clear revenue model, simple transaction, and then make sure that everyone knows about it. That's the important thing. Like, for example, this sweatshirt right here, dope sweatshirt. Um, if no one knew that they could buy this at sassinbrand.com, S-A-S-N-Brand.com, then we'd never convert any sales. We wouldn't be able to represent this out in the world and teach people the meaning of the word misandry, which means the hatred of men. Everyone knows the word misogyny. It's overly used, but this word they need to learn. But we have to see, well, I'm actually marketing this word as well, right? Because people need the word. But if no one knew that they could get this at sassinbrand.com, then it wouldn't ever sell, even if people thought it was a great, good-looking sweatshirt. So visibility and marketing, people have to be aware. That's a critical component to convert. Shout out to the baller. Is, did he come in three times with a baller alert? Am I tripping? That's his third baller alert? That's impressive. The record was, what, 1,000? It was like it was either like nine hundred nine nine hundred ninety nine or something like or it was like one thousand. I forget if he had did an angel number with it or something, but it's like basically one thousand, which I need to we need to post that up because he does have the record. He does indeed have the record. Shout out to Limitless Aspirations. 
writes, thank you, sir. I'm a truck driver working 60 to 70 hours a week with inconsistent internet connections, and I'm off two days a week. I have two women I can trust to get tasks done on my behalf. That's that's good. Is product-based business right for my situation? Yeah, if you can lead well. Yeah, if you can lead and organize well. And women are generally competent. You hear me? They're generally competent. And if they're willing to work, put them to work, brethren. And that's the whole piece about being a uh, a businessman, a leader is that you're one who operates systems and systems. You can operate remotely. You can operate that from a phone call. So once you get a good, simple business and a business system, and you've told those ladies what their roles are within this system, then you got action. So absolutely. You can get this done. Oh, he, oh, he's right. I can somewhat trust. Okay. Sorry. I, that is a key word. Yes. <laughs> it get like that brethren. So if that's the case, 